Thank you. It's a real privilege to be here this afternoon. We have nothing to disclose. Pancreas divisum is uh, the most common developmental ab anomaly of the pancreas, estimated to be anywhere from 5% of the population. There's only a small subset of those individuals with pancreas divisum who will eventually go on to develop symptoms, and there's three sort of manifestations of symptomatic pancreas divisum, uh, the first being just recurrent epigastric pain without any evidence of pancreatitis. Recurrent acute pancreatitis, which is um, repeated bouts of pancreatitis without any morphologic changes to the pancreas gland itself, noted on abdominal imaging, and then chronic pancreatitis. And the, the last two, there is some evidence that they exist on the same spectrum of disease pattern, but uh, many people still treat them as separate disease processes. And here's sort of the two main morphologic changes in chronic pancreatitis. You can have calcific disease, which is that on the left, or dilated pancreatic duct. This is a, a representative of a patient with chronic pancreatitis. Injection of the ventral duct there shows a complete divisum. When, um, when you find this on the RCP, you know your work isn't done. You need to pull the scope back and twist it a little bit to the right, and that's usually where you're going to find the minor papilla. Here's another image of, of an incomplete divisum. So here's a couple pictures. The red arrows uh, mark the minor papilla. The first step in this is cannulating the minor papilla, which can be quite difficult, as there's oftentimes a stricture there right at the papilla, then performing a minor papillotomy, and then uh, any interventions that are deemed necessary. So you can either um, remove stones from the pancreatic duct if you can get beyond them. There's a few different methods uh, to do this. The one shown on the left there is using a, a wire-guided basket to remove stones. And then dilating any strictures in the pancreatic duct with a balloon, balloon dilation, or you can use an over-the-wire over the uh, dilator. And then uh, our practice is to usually place a stent and then um, bring them back for a stent removal in about two months. And if it, the patients had a good response and um, the lesions in the pancreatic duct, either the stones or the strictures are completely resolved, then remove it at that time. If not, then we would perform additional interventions and typically upsize the stent to the uh, next biggest size. So um, there uh, really isn't any good data to guide our therapy um, for patients with uh, chronic pancreatitis secondary to pancreas divisum. Um, in the literature, it does show that there is a, a lower success rate with chronic pancreatitis um, in comparison with recurrent acute pancreatitis. And uh, we reviewed our experience to identify factors that would re predict the response to the endoscopic treatment. So we reviewed our uh, ERCPs from 2008 to 2016, um, performed by uh, two surgeons at the University of Louisville. Um, the study was uh, approved by our IRB. We grouped our, uh, our patients into two groups, uh, the first being one to two ERCPs versus three plus ERCPs. And the rationale here is that um, a patient who responds initially will undergo um, either one or two ERCPs, one to, to do the intervention, place the stent, the second one to remove the stent, uh, versus three plus ERCPs is someone who uh, fails to respond initially and uh, requires subsequent interventions. And our hypothesis was that the three, three plus ERCP group would uh, be more likely to go on to require eventual uh, surgical intervention. Our comparisons, uh, age, gender, labs, the type of symptoms they were experiencing in terms of the location of their pain, imaging characteristics, and the number of hospitalizations prior to their initial ERCP, and then outcomes, uh, improvement of pain after their initial ERCP, and then the subsequent need for operative intervention. Uh, we used a t-test, chi-squared, and Fisher exact test, depending on the type of variables we were comparing between the two groups, and then uh, logistic regression um, to identify independent, risk, independent factors predicting the response. So we performed a total of 4,610 ERCPs during this study period, and there were five, 75 patients who were identified um, who underwent ERCP for the management of chronic pancreatitis, sickness pancreas divism, which is the largest series in, in the literature to date. Um, 
there were one third who uh, underwent one or two and two thirds who underwent three plus, so 25 and 50. 53% um, had initial improvement and 37% uh, went on to surgical intervention. The comparisons, um, we found uh, back pain to be uh, associated with needing three plus ERCPs and there were no, um, there were no st statistically significant differences in their pre-procedural pre uh, lab values. And then dilated common bile duct was also associated with needing three plus ERCPs. And then on the outcomes, uh, we, did, we did find as expected that three plus ERCPs was more likely um, to require uh, eventual operative intervention. On multivariate analysis, only the presence of a dilated bile duct was independently associated with needing uh, three or more ERCPs, um, and back pain just trended toward but did not re reach statistical significance. This is a retrospective study. It's a complex disease process and uh, oftentimes a very heterogeneous patient population, um, which uh, limits the ability to make generalizations um, from the data set. In conclusion, the endoscopic management of chronic pancreatitis from pancreas divisum is successful in a subset of patients, and it requires multiple ERCPs in many. And the presence of a dilated bile duct and back pain is associated with needing more than three ERCPs and is more likely to require eventual surgical intervention. So patients who do have dilated bile duct or back pain um, may indicate a more advanced disease process that is less likely to respond to ERCP and they should um, possibly be considered for surgical intervention earlier in the course. Thank you. Thank you.